um, he's always ready around the school to help with the physical realities of our life. And that's big. Questions like, where is the yellow extension cord? <laughs> why isn't the internet connection in the blue room working, Casimir? And why can't I see the hidden screen when I'm trying to project from my map? <laughs> so would you please, when you have some time, get out the gigantic ladder, drag it into the hall, and fix the lights for us. <laughs> Do that during lunch, and it's okay if you're late to English. <laughs> Even this afternoon, while the class was preparing to set up for the senior project, a huge undertaking, Cosmer was willing to meet me at noon upstairs to take pictures of all of the senior portraits that were painted in my painting class. You know, he's always there when you need him. I am so deeply grateful. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Um, I mean, even this evening when I came in about 6.30, here he is, you know, with his t-shirt on, working on the lighting for this evening and taking care of all kinds of little odds and ends. He doesn't even realize how much he does to help support, I'd say, the physical reality of Hawthorne Valley School. Um, artistic, meticulous, gifted. For college, he plans to study architecture. He has a fabulous list of acceptances. And right now, he's deliberating between Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, I think they've got a big scholarship waiting for him up there, or Arcup, I said right, Arcup, in Prague. And he's going to check that out when he's done checking out the video. <laughs> <laughs> so when I said for a senior project, Kazimir took his artistic interests into new territory. Kazimir Sudamendra. <laughs> Original uh, dream 
which I figured out with Matthias when we met at his house and kind of went over the, the schedule for the, for the, like the idea. I wanted to do photography in the beginning. And, uh, and so he, he had these cameras. He just had them. Who would know? Like, <laughs> who just has these cameras? So I was able to use them. Thank you so much. And um, I dreamed of printing these prints, which are really hard to print because nobody has enlargers for that film size. The larger you need to have is like, it's you. You'll see anyways. Um, so next, yeah, you go to the next picture. Uh, me setting up the camera again. So the way it works, you have the lens on the front, you have the billows, and you have a glass plate on the back. So there's like this glass thing. That's where you look at the image. You actually get to see the picture before you take it, which is really cool. Um, and then you have this, which you stick over your head like that, and hope nobody's like going to steal anything from you. <laughs> 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 um, so that's upside down. OK. <laughs> so that actually is perfect. Um, when you look at the image in here, it's upside down and horizontal. So it's like convenient seeing the picture, but you can't really make it heads or tails of it. It's kind of confusing. Um, nice picture. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I have a cyclops sometimes. <laughs> um, nice picture. Um, so yeah, I, the first big shoot I went on, I went down to Brooklyn to visit Pratt, the architecture program there. And, uh, and I figured I'll just, you know, lug this huge box with me, you know, no biggie, huge, huge, huge silver box <laughs> with that camera and the tripod. Um, it went pretty well getting through the subways was a bit of a trick, but then I found the emergency exit door, which is very useful. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a lot of people came up to me and asked about the camera while I take pictures with it. And it's always really interesting the dialogue I get into and like also like people who've never done it before, you know, like, what is that, a camera? Uh, all sorts of things. Um, and so yeah, uh, another shoot I went on, uh, this was during basketball season, so as you can guess, my, my senior project just went into hibernation. Uh, and uh, I only got to take uh, pictures two times. This was a picture of the moon. Uh, with a digital camera, I had to hold it by hand, and so that was a two minute exposure. The moon got all fuzzy. Um, I didn't print any of those pictures because nothing came out very well. It was like, First time I used the camera and it was all very dark still. That's of course it's black and night. Uh, and I didn't zoom. Anyways, next picture. Uh, so then it got more fun. Um, I didn't have basketball anymore and I scheduled uh, a shoot with Harry Lazare. And I went out to his studio and we talked for hours and hours, as you can guess Harry and I would do. And, and finally we got around to taking the photograph. Um, he took a number of pictures of his artwork and of him, and uh, it was really an incredible experience because when you take a photograph, nowadays we're so removed. Where you, know, you pull out your iPhone, you snap a picture, put it on Instagram, everybody likes it, you look good. Uh, <laughs> but here, you know, real photography I learned is about learning your like who your subject is. What are you taking a photograph of? And so in a way, it's, it, it seems like. It seems so shallow. You just like you just snap a picture, but it's really you have to get really deep into what you're taking a picture of, and through that understanding, take a better picture. So, nice picture. Uh, so that's one of the pictures I took of Barry uh, holding up his favorite piece of work that he made. Um, and again, I didn't have any of these pieces to show because they also came out very dark because the studio was dark. Well, for my camera, for the yeah, technicalities, I was learning as well. Uh, but it was really a lot of fun, and I learned so much, um, so much about the, how special life is. You know, we, we live life and take it for granted in so many ways, and we all share death, but nobody ever talks about it. And so Harry talked about it, because he faced death quite closely for a number of months uh, with an illness that, uh, that pretty much gave him a death date. But we talked a lot, and it was amazing learning how you would overcome that, how you live through that, being told you will die, uh, but overcoming that, and actually overcoming his disease so that he's here, healthy as can be. Uh, <laughs> and this photo, if you haven't been scared yet by it, uh, <laughs> Uh, we found this phone in the studio, and we figured it was fitting because
because his illness is about uh, the marrow in his bones. Uh, and so, you know, here he's conquered it. He's got this under control. Then I did another shoot um, with uh, Leah, with Mr. Cronin, and myself. Uh, I just put a picture of her and of Mr. Cronin. Go to the next one. Uh, <laughs> uh, we set up a, a, like a whole rig with lights and everything in the Arrhythmia room, which I never knew, but it's actually a great studio for photography. And um, this picture was taken with a digital camera. I didn't develop, or sorry, I didn't print any of the film pictures because they too came out quite dark. Um, something I didn't know early on is that the camera has like a lot of technicalities that you must learn. Like if you extend these very far, you lose light, and then you have to make a longer exposure. So many of my pictures were dark in the beginning. A bit of a bummer, but next picture. Um, so yeah, you can see like that's pretty long extension. That's this camera. Uh, so then I did another shoot with Harry Lazare because. I really wanted to capture this image, uh, and I hadn't been able to in the studio. Uh, so yeah, you're there. <laughs> so <laughs> what we were doing, uh, we were trying to figure out what the picture would be. Uh, so just using a digital camera is really useful for that. We didn't have Polaroid or anything to do instant prints. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> so that's my favorite picture. <laughs> that's the picture I wanted to take, but I think this is more fitting. Uh, um, so that was the first time I worked with 8x10 negatives. Um, and it was a totally different experience because, as you saw on that slide before, your negative is this size. So when you develop it, you're not like squinting at this tiny little thing. Like you see it, but it's really impressive and quite an experience, yes. Uh, next picture. Um, so this is, as I said, like you see the image. You can also make a contact print which is just putting film directly on paper and printing with an emulsor that projects light over your film. Um, sorry, I got so into this. Let me clarify. I did most of the developing in the HBS darkroom, which I fixed up from the storage darkroom, or storage room. Or uh, and so this is, yeah, you, you do like three trays, uh, developer, fixer, and then stop that in the middle. And this is when it's in the fixer, you put the lights on, and that was just a contact print me, which is, this print, but this was an enlargement, so it's bigger. Um, uh, so this was another 8x10 shoot I went on. Uh, I kind of scrambled because I hadn't been sure that I would be able to enlarge 8x10 negatives, uh, but I found uh, an 8x10 larger in New Hampshire uh, through Victor Millen, who's a parent here, who gave me the name of uh, a photographer, and I got in contact with him. And I went up to New Hampshire, and I was able to print. And so once I knew about that, I could take the pictures. So this was done in April, uh, April, did I shoot? The April 6th. Uh, so that's the enlarger that I printed these on. And um, it's $30,000, so you can imagine there are not that many of these. Uh, it was almost thrown out, and then he found it on a loading dock and saved it. Uh, and he hadn't used it in many years, so we fixed it up first and then uh, got to work. Um, I don't know how much I should go into the detail of black and white photography, because it's kind of old, but some of you may know. But uh, enlarging is the process of printing. So instead of using a printer, a digital printer, you use an enlarger, which projects your image onto the paper. Uh, the paper is sensitive to light, just like the film is. And then you, then, uh, you develop that paper, stop the paper, and fix it. And then you have the image. Um, so I learned a lot of things from this project. Um, I learned it, a lot about go like you go out in the world to take photographs, and then you go in, and you go into the dark room, and it's pitch black, and you develop. And you have this like hours of developing and being in the dark room to just think and like reflect on the photographs you took and the experience you had taking them and the homework you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> and everything else in the world. Um, but I really found those moments special because nowadays I feel everything's so quick and you know so flashy, and uh, you don't ever get to kind of slow down and reflect and think about where you're going to go to college and what the rest of your life is going to be. So I really appreciated those moments of just being in the dark, completely blind, which is quite a experience at first. Um, I will not continue black and white photography uh, as a profession, although it will always be my hobby. And 
I guess never say never, I might. Um, I would love to study architecture. As Ms. Stone mentioned, I'm looking at a school in uh, Prague named Kharkiv, and I'm looking at RPI. And something that happened right at the end of my project when I was printing with Paul, uh, the lawyer, um, was we talked about black and white photography, we talked about printmaking, because he's a printmaker, and then I mentioned architecture. And he really actually married these three subjects into one for me, because he said the earliest printmakers, the earliest photographers, they were all architects. And so I realized that what I thought was a tangent from my lifelong passion was actually kind of right in there with it. It just kind of worked. So I, that was a really great moment for me, because at the end I was feeling like, this is really fun, but not something I could do, or I, I should have done something more architecture related. But it did. Um, here, I'd just like to point out, there's two prints. Um, they are the exact same setup. The only difference is that I've cropped this one a lot more. And I found it really fascinating. Uh, in photography, it's not always what you take a picture of, but how you crop it that can change the picture so much. So it's almost more what you don't take a picture of that makes the photo. Um, so I'd like to say thank yous. Uh, I'd like to thank my parents for buying all the film, for buying all the paper, um, supporting me in the whole way, and uh, especially when I was trying to figure out my senior project. I'd like to thank my mentor, Matthias Wormer, for supplying the camera. Uh, great advice, always replying to emails, phone calls, everything. How does this work? Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Mady, uh, after school, always giving a good word to me, keep me on track and taking photographs. Um, I'd like to thank Victor Millen for giving me uh, this contact, and Paul uh, Taylor for letting me use his room. I'd like to thank Mr. Mueller for helping me with my speech. I'd like to thank Michael Puther for some donating some like darkroom equipment and things that were really helpful. I'd also like to thank an anonymous donor who donated an entire larger, Omega Larger, and other equipment to the darkroom here, and that was really helpful when I was doing my project. <laughs> so I'd like to thank um, and anyone else who modeled for me and uh, helped me out any, uh, any, in any part of the way, uh, especially Harry Lazare, who was an incredible model. Uh, I was right on cue <laughs> and uh, bringing a good laugh to the studio. And the school for giving me this opportunity. Um, I guess that sums it up. Thank you. Sit down in the cafe and enjoy my art there. <laughs>